सो वॉट हैपन्स इन स्पाइजिलियन हर्निया हेयर देर इज हर्निया अकरिंग थ्रू द स्पाइजिलियन फेशिया If you see the location of most of the hernias, most of the hernias are located in infra umbilical region. Question why? Because in infra umbilical region there is absence of posterior rectus sheath. So here also the spigelian hernia it is also located in infra umbilical region where exactly you can see here this is the arcuate line. So the location is at or just below arcuate line. So what happens in spigelian hernia here? Hernia occurring through spigelian fascia. So here is the hernia occurring through through spigelian fascia through spigelian fascia clear and what is the location we discussed it is located in infra umbilical region what is the most common location at or below arcuate line if you see belly in belly it's strongly written that it is located above arcuate line what is the location it is located in infra umbilical region at or below arcuate line the location is it is at or below arcuate line at or below arcuate line clear so here you can see the location it is located at or below arcuate line now see the important points related to anatomy you can see this is rectus abdominis muscle what is the name this muscle is rectus abdominis so what is the location of this spigelian fascia this is the spigelian fascia it is bounded laterally by one line this is known as semi lunar line of spigel so you can see this line is semi lunar line of spigel and what is the medial boundary medially is the lateral border of rectus abdominis so it is located between rectus abdominis medially and semi lunar line of spigel laterally and you can see this is the spigelian fascia so what happens in spigelian hernia there is hernia occurring via or through spigelian fascia here you can see this is the arcuate line so what is the location most of these hernias are located at or below arcuate line what is the location at or below arcuate line now what happens here suppose these are the four most important layers of abdominal wall external oblique internal oblique transversus abdominis fascia transversalis so what this hernia it is going to penetrate spigelian fascia after that it is going to penetrate the internal oblique and the hernia sac it is located between external oblique and internal oblique so since it penetrates the internal oblique and it is located between external oblique and internal oblique it means what is the name this is also known as interparietal hernia since it is located beneath external oblique muscle that's why it is neither palpable nor visible so neither visible nor palpable so important point what is the other name of spigelian hernia the other name it is also known as interparietal hernia and why it is known as interparietal hernia it is also known as interparietal hernia because it is going to penetrate the internal oblique muscle and what is the location it is located between internal oblique and external oblique so it is located hernia it is located between internal oblique and external oblique because it is going to penetrate the internal oblique that's why the name is interparietal hernia in this image you can see this is the spigelian hernia clear and it is going to penetrate what internal oblique and after penetrating internal oblique it is located between what internal oblique and external oblique what it so it is located between internal oblique and external oblique so here hernia is located behind external oblique that's why it is neither visible this hernia it is neither visible nor palpable this is neither visible nor palpable nor palpable that's why in these cases what happens there is delayed presentation or there is late presentation because patient is not aware of that patient is suffering from hernia so what will be the clinical presentation clinical features here there is delayed presentation so there is late presentation because of this late presentation when the patient becomes symptomatic what happens patient is having abdominal pain then patient comes to you patient is having abdominal pain and then patient comes to you but what happens hernia is neither visible nor palpable because of that what will happen there is delay in diagnosis so because there is delay in diagnosis there is delay in diagnosis because of that what's the problem there is increased risk of strangulation increased risk of strangulation in spigelian hernia so these patients are having increased risk of strangulation clear we discussed that how we are going to make the diagnosis of hernia yes 
The diagnosis of hernia is clinical, but we discussed that there are two exceptions. What? Internal hernia and the hernias which are neither visible nor palpable, spigelian hernia. So since you cannot make the diagnosis clinically, here, how you are going to make the diagnosis? Ultrasound or CT. So in these patients, how we are going to make the diagnosis? Diagnosis is made by ultrasound or CT. After that, how we are going to manage? this hernia. So we have to reduce the herniated content back and we have to close the defect. So what's the management? Management in cases of spigelian hernia, reduce the herniated organ back and close the defect. So reduce, reduce the herniated organ back, the herniated organ back and we have to close the defect. So what else? Close the defect. So reduce the herniated organ back and close the defect. 